So this is my 86 Fox Body Mustang. And I uh, recently put a 351 Windsor in here. And I wanted to talk a little bit about some tips and things that I learned that I wish I would have known beforehand before I did the swap. A little bit about some of the parts I used and what I found out about some of them, even though they're made specifically for a 351 swap into a Fox Body. Um, first thing that I wanted to do talk about was deciding whether you're going to go fuel injected or carbureted um, and also whether or not you want to use a stock hood or whether you want to use a cowl hood. I obviously opted for the factory hood, didn't want to do a cowl and I wanted to go fuel injected. Uh, this is a little different setup. I'm in the process of um, doing some upgrades, putting a supercharger on, but I originally bought this engine and the accessories. You can tell this is from an F-150 as is the power steering pump. The other bracket on the other side was as well. I bought this from a 93 Ford Lightning, so I had the GT40 upper and lower intake. I also got uh, the wiring harness, the um, ECU, everything I needed to make it run. Um, the only downfall with that was that it was speed density, not mass air, but that's another topic for another time. So um, you have to decide whether you want to go fuel injected or carbureted, and also whether or not you want to use a stock hood or a cowl hood. Um, reason being is that if you do um, the stock hood, there's a lot of extra things that you need to do to get it to fit underneath the stock hood. Whereas if you go a cowl hood, it makes things a lot easier, um, depending. You have to use at least a 2.5 inch or 3 inch cowl, but um, at any rate. If you go fuel injected to get it under the stock hood, a couple things that I did. Um, I used, I don't know if you can see it very well, but down in here is the um, engine mounts that I used. It is a... Uh, it is made specifically for a 351 swap into a Fox body. Um, LRS, late model restoration supply, carries them in it. It is a solid steel drop motor mount for a 351 swap. Um, the other thing you'll need is the 351 swap oil pan and uh, 351 swap headers. You can see right there I have some clearance issues on my steering shaft. Not sure if it's showing up that well, but. Um, with the drop motor mounts that I used, because I wanted to use the stock hood, I ran into a clearance issue on my steering shaft and also on my oil pan. Because that drops at an additional inch and a quarter, you end up um, resting your oil pan on top of your steering rack. Um, I didn't really want that happening. It's, you know, vibration over time could cause a hole in the oil pan. I mean, not probable, but it's a possibility. Um, so the fix for that was to space my K member and um, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see this that well or not but in between where your um, factory you can see those washers that I've, that I've got in there but in between um, in between where your factory uh, I'm going to go grab a light here so I can give you a little better view in between where your factory cam ember mounts on the car and the frame, you can see right there, that's the sway bar that I had to space down. But you also, right there, you can see those washers that I have in there. You can space your cam ember down from the frame. Um, you don't change the geometry of the suspension that much depending on how far you go. I left it at uh, roughly an inch. Um, space my K member down and then what I also had to do you can kind of see a little bit better with this light that I've got here um, is I kind of had to space my engine mounts up a little bit you can see right right there that black part is the engine mount and there's a spacer in between there to get it off of the oil pan I had to use a spacer uh, it's maybe like a I think a quarter inch spacer, not much, um, but I did that on both sides. And that's with the solid drop motor mounts, the 351 swap oil pan, um, and I still ran into clearance issues with my, with my light here. You can see a little bit better. You can see where my header has been rubbing on my steering shaft right there. Um, there's going to be some fitment issues, but if you use the regular engine mounts um, from a 302, the oil pan sits up where it should be. The 351 swap headers don't rub. Um, you don't have to space your K-member down, but you've got to use a cowl hood. Now, it's really difficult to get this, um, while well, the GT40 intake setup that I had underneath a stock hood, 
and I still ended up, you can kind of see right here, I dented the hood up just a little bit, um, but not enough for me to care. I eventually knew I was going to this setup and had to do a cowl hood anyway, just didn't have the money at the time. So uh, for what it's worth, that's kind of my opinion on, on those few parts there. So if you use the regular uh, 302 motor mounts, um, the convertible ones, people say are stronger, but any 302 mounts will work, the polyurethane ones or, or whatever, um, they all bolt to the 351 the same way. Then your oil pan won't rest on the on the uh, steering rack, and your headers won't have the issues. Um, the other thing I showed you uh, was the spacers between the um, sway bar. If you want to keep your front sway bar, you need to space that down, otherwise you will hit the front um, of the oil pan with your sway bar when you drop it down. Uh, I read a lot about it and I uh, tried it slowly to, to see how much of a clearance was and, and I ended up having to space it down quite a bit. Um, I think it was about an inch and a quarter when it was all said and done but then I could keep my sway bar and, and um, I was kind of happy about that. I drive my car more on the street than I do the track so for me the sway bar is kind of a necessary thing. Um, a couple of the other things that I want to talk about um, if you go fuel injected, the 351, they actually made, uh, if you're familiar with the, the 302 style, if you had a V8 in your car before, it's a TFI style distributor. Um, the 351s, they actually made a TFI style distributor. Um, it was on the early 351s, so you can pick that up at an auto parts store for 50 or 80 bucks, and that'll work with your factory, um, factory 302 wiring harness for, for the V8. Um, all the other connectors are all plug and play if you decided to keep EFI and you had a V8 before. I did not. I had a V6, so I had to get an entire wiring harness and everything. It was kind of a pain. Carbureted's easier. It just depends on what you know, um, how much information you have, how good you are at schematics. In a Chilton's manual, it shows you all different schematics from different years. Um, the other thing is the accessories. I opted to go with the entire engine. Um, to get these accessory brackets that way I didn't have to worry about changing anything here The 302 brackets will work on this side if you want to keep your AC, but you have to get a 351 swap bracket I opted for this because I mean it's got my AC condenser here um, I'll have to do a little work on the back side to get it to work with the with the AC lines But I already had the brackets didn't have to hunt for anything. It came with the engine um, But that's kind of up to up to how much work you want to do. The other thing you got to worry about on these is that your flywheel or flex plate, depending on if you're doing a manual or an automatic, uh, is a 28 ounce imbalance versus the 50 ounce imbalance that 302 has. So you'll have to make sure you get a 157 tooth flywheel um, that's got a 28 ounce imbalance. Um, and Late Model Restoration Supply actually just posted a really good tutorial and parts list on their website. I'm going to put a link in the description for you guys if anybody wants to check it out. Um, but they've got a, a big tutorial and parts, um, and I used a lot of them. I got my 351 swap headers from there. I got the drop motor mounts. Um, what else did I get from them? My flywheel I actually bought off uh, Jegs. It was a Ford Racing billet steel flywheel. They didn't have that option, but as long as you get a 157 tooth flywheel um, or flex plate, and then you get the 28 ounce 28 ounce imbalance, um, it'll work just fine. Um, I think that's pretty much all of the. I mean, there's a bunch, there's a, some of the little things. Uh, the fuel system is kind of different. Your uh, 351 is wider on the top, so your 302 fuel rail won't work. You can see this is this is why what I opted to do here with my new intake setup. Um, but I actually had the, and I think I have it laying around here. The, I had the fuel rail from the 351 from the truck. You can see right here. The only difference is how the fuel lines come in. Um, your fuel pressure regulator. I actually had to have my intake on backwards. You can see on some of my other videos, the intake I actually had coming off over this way, and then I had to drill a hole. I have since switched that with the supercharger setup, but um, there's some other little things you'll run into with where your fuel lines are, because on your 302 it comes up in the front. So they make some adapters and whatnot for that. But uh, my video is getting a little longer. I guess if uh, anybody's got any questions or um, if you want any more information, feel free to post in the comments or send me a message. I can shoot up some more videos, but hopefully that helped a little bit. Um, I know I ran into quite a few issues that were a pain in the butt, um, not knowing any of the information. But that was some tips for swapping a 351 into a Fox body. Um, hopefully that helped.